because it is that song and many of the likes that made our mothers and fathers to hold those who struggled for freedom and liberation in prayer all the time. It is them, like former president of the African National Congress, Baba Oliver Tambo, who, before he decided to be a lawyer, wanted to be a priest of the Methodist Church. <laughs> And that spiritual vein continued in his life all the time. In 1987, in Harare, during the UN Conference on Children in Detention, when he called those who come from South Africa, both inside and outside, to meet after the conference, he started the song, Lazalis Sedigala. In a way, trying to say to South Africans, one day we will form one nation. I'd like to stand on the protocols that have been already acknowledged here by our program director, but it would be a miss of me not to recognize our Deputy President in absentia, the Chair of the Interministerial Committee, and all other members of the IMC, the Ministers and Deputies, some of you are here today, and others may not be here. It would also be amiss of me if I do not recognize my colleagues with whom we have walked this journey in the agriculture and the land space. Deputy Minister Squatch. You really have walked this journey with us. Handing over the day 10 from the fifth administration in which you served as a deputy minister. Bringing the experience of the work that you did <laughs> with both Minister Nkwana Mashamana and Minister Nkwinti. We want to acknowledge you and many of the officials who actually had carried this journey from a number of political executive authorities who really has steered the ship and the directors general who from 1994 have sought to make the promise of our constitution a reality. Our MECs present with us here today, MEC Shriba and MEC Mgwena, you came, you took over the baton, and really became a part of the team to make sure that land and agriculture strive in our country as a sector. Some of you came at a difficult time during COVID, where we had to make sure that South Africans continue to eat. It is during moments like this when we recognize various officials who have played an important journey to make sure that the tasks were given as a mandate in terms of our political office is brought to reality. In the land restitution space, I would like to recognize the late Mr. Mbogli, Tozi Kwanya, and now Nufundo Koboto. <coughs> and your team for the work we have done from the beginning of the post apartheid South Africa to today. Our Directors General, Director General Batlender, Director General Bongwe Njobe, Director General Glenn Thomas, Director General Masipula Mbonga, Director General Mdu Shabani, Acting DG Rendani Sadiki, DG Ramasodi. We also want to acknowledge majority of DDGs 
who have actually handled these two portfolios of land and agriculture. Some of them are here today. DDG Moshe, DDG Suland, DDG Diana Kelia, DDG's Misunduli, DDG Mohajan, DDG Tandimoyo, DDG Letopa, Clinton Hyman, DDG Metomakulu. There may be others I've forgotten. I'm mentioning them and their teams because without their effort and their work, we wouldn't be here today. But the important roles that have been played by legislatures in our country, members of the portfolio committees, from the first time headed by Janet Love in the agricultural area, headed by Newa Masitela at some stage, Mandla Mandela in this latest phase, and Mabila Mwenya in the fifth administration. Again, there may be others that I forget. But it is all of these men and women who have laid the basis of ensuring that we bring to reality what our constitution and our freedom <coughs> charter espoused. I want to start my intervention by reminding us of the words of Clement Kadali. <coughs> a day after the signing of the 1913 Land Act. This is what he had to say. From a comparatively free husband's man, the native has been converted into a modern wage slave with only his labor power to sell. This is the change in South Africa, the transformation of the native farmer into a landless proletariat close quote. Today, the work we are doing is to reverse what Clement Kadali <coughs> said then. And in doing so, building hope to many South Africans that today will be better than yesterday. I'm reminded of the words of the late Babu Mswengani, who only October last year decided that he would want to hold his annual lecture in this very hall. He said, I quote in the foreword of his book, a testament of hope is a true story, not only about me, my family, and my tribesmen, but largely, it is about political events and social economic developments that occurred during my lifetime, wherein I had important role to play. As I was born and raised in the countryside, where agricultural activity represented the main source of livelihood and sustenance, it is not surprising that I became closely involved with the development of black farming communities quite early in my adult life, close quote. Today, we meet here in part to bear witness to the testament of hope that drove Dr. Mzwenyane, Babu Matibandlela, Babu Maponya, to the heroines like Ma Lydia Ngwenyako Mape, Miss Beauty Mkize, and many others who, in the face of adversities, made their contributions to ensure that we will regain our land and make sure that we better the lives of the native men and women. It was their testament of hope that continued to remind us that access to land is the first step of regaining our identity and opening possibilities for growing the wealth for our families and those of our children's future. 
The land is a finite and indispensable economic asset that defines a people's identity and provides human dignity. Land is an integral part of national sovereignty and a basis for national cohesion. It is this testament to their hope that reminds us each and every day that we need to do what we can to reverse the legacy of land dispossession and be true to our constitution by ensuring that equitable access to land is realized. Building on their hope, when the sixth administration government took office, His Excellency President Matamela Ramaphosa committed to fast track the land reform and the provision of post settlement support to land beneficiaries. He was built on the work he started in 2018 when he set up the presidential panel on land and agriculture. In 2019, that report was done and actually tabled to cabinet for approval of its recommendation, which it did. President Ramaphosa then appointed the interministerial chair by the deputy president. At first it was deputy president Mabuza and now <coughs> deputy president Mashatine. To ensure the work of the IMC was grounded on sound advisory and research, this panel gave us the basis of what we needed to do as part of our program of action. We decided on six pillars that we needed to create an enabling environment through policy and legislation. We needed to integrate <coughs> land administration. We needed to ensure that spatial transformation and development planning is done, and that strategic acquisition, the release and allocation of land, and integrated and post settlement support is realized. Today we are here, therefore, to celebrate the work that the IMC has done in the past five years. While rejoicing, we acknowledge that the struggles waged against this land disposition took many forms, including purchasing the land by many black people. Some did it in their own right, as they were known as the land esquires. Others did it through churches such as the Moravian Church, the Methodist Church, and many others. I must say that yesterday, through tenure reform, we concluded 126 title deeds of the community of Bareki in Elias Nusualedi municipality in the district of Skukune in Limpompo. These families, their fathers and their mothers, bought each 10 hectares of land at the time, whose title deed was not given to them, but rather attached to the Minister of Native Affairs. And as part of our land reform process, we designed a program of <coughs> land adjustment to ensure that we actually return those lands to their rightful owners in title. A celebration will be held later. But it is not only Bari. Some of you would remember the community of Shadastone in KwaZulu Natal, <coughs> where Babuma Vuso comes from Babume and Jimsimang and Babusangwe. We will also remember the lands of Itindale and my respect, where people like Babu Herikwala comes from. The areas of Tala in the Eastern Cape, which was once known as British Kafraria. In the areas of Graudville, where Babu Tuli comes from. These are the areas which had their freehold land, but as a result of land dispossession, they were never given their full title. I'm sure one of those that is celebrated and is known is the one of the Bafuken land. It falls under these areas where people, as part of the fight back against apartheid, they actually decided that you will never dampen our spirit, we will buy back our land in order to secure 
our identity. It is the testament of hope in the face of adversity that has made labor tenants, farm occupiers, and farm workers work with the government to address their tenure insecurity as a result of the two pieces of legislation that were promulgated. To address the security of tenure for farm dwellers and labor tenants, a total of 28,367 hectares have been acquired in these past five years, benefiting about 1,588 beneficiaries, including 665 women and 444 young people. It is the testament of hope that has made rural communities and individuals who have received their land back through the restitution program, where from 2019 to 2024, a total of 1,494 claims have been settled. Since the dawn of democracy, a total of 2.3 million people have benefited from land restitution, where 177,000 504 are female-headed households, and 1,266 are households headed by persons with disability. I must say that as part of the IMC work, government through the Department of Public Works have actually released more state land to make sure that we make good to claimants who have requested their land as part of land restitution. <clears throat> but this only talks in part to those who received land. However, some who received financial compensation have actually taken these investments to improve their livelihoods and others to take their children to school, ensuring that in future they break the cycle of poverty in these families. I would like you to access the report that has been commissioned by the Land Restitution Commissioner Nofundo Kobodo to actually assess in the past 30 years what has been the impact of financial compensation to those who received it. Because as we know, many people actually think that when people receive financial compensation, they squander it and not invest it for their development. And the research results proves something different. Many smallholder and subsistence farmers today are receiving support through agricultural inputs in order to continue providing food security for their families. Yes, this may not be enough. But it's the intervention that this government, at national and at provincial level, have worked together to make sure that we build on the work that has been done on comprehensive rural development in our country. I'm sure for my DDG, Moshe Hussein, for us here today, when you look back at some of the work that has been done in building infrastructure in those rural communities as part of the farmer support production units, a basis from which we'll build our agri-parks, an initiative piloted by Minister Nguinti, we would say, indeed, yesterday is not the same as today. Yes. Mm. Our farmers in rural communities now have centers of mechanization that can enable them to actually shoulder the task of working the land. Some of those FPSUs enable them to actually store and process their produce. Yes, we might not have reached every corner, but these are some of the foundations that this government has laid in the 30 years. But through this work, we partnered with farmer organizations, some of them here with you today, to actually ensure 
that we can give necessary skills to work and support many of our farmers. Musha will appreciate that someone and a lady took over the baton from you. Yes, Tandi is here. Yes. Some of those <laughs> FPSUs are completed like in fresh form in um, Skukuni, which you know. We will be finishing others with Safta in Josini. Some in Mzimkulu have already finished. Myself and deputy ministers and MECs would have loved to be dancing each and every day, <laughs> handing over such facilities, but unfortunately, other work has to happen. But it is this infrastructure support that the IMC has continued to drive and oversee that it is done. And one of the interesting things <laughs> is the continuity from the work that was started in the other previous administration, strengthened and continued. And this is the beauty of ensuring that there is appreciation, both from the political offices and the administration, that we do not discard what we have started, but we build on it and improve. Today, some black commercial farmers who have received land from the state, even though at the time on a lease basis, some of them have grown and have even entered the agricultural economy and are now today entering export market. Just last week, we were in Northwest, where Dr. Mfigwe, formerly a medical doctor, turned into a farmer, built from livestock farming and is now in the processing space, has opened an abattoir that can actually make sure that he does not only sell his cattle in the auction, but can really slaughter and sell meat processed or actually in bulk to butcheries and others. It is this contribution that the state has made that has enabled farmers like Boba Buntuen in Abuskosana in Nkangala, who when they talk to you, they said, we started working on these plus farms today working with my son and grandson, I'm actually building a processing plant where I can compete with those who have been advantaged before. <laughs> Babus Kosana, in showing us the implements that he built, told a very funny story. He showed us you know, the first shed and said, well, this is the first tractor that government assisted me with. But look at the Rolls Royce that I built. He said, I'm waiting for one that is coming through the ship that I'll be picking up from Devonport. He now has got six of big farmers that even have a cover and an air condition. And a harvester to actually harvest his maize. As we drove to his farm, we were saddened by what had happened as a result of the hay. But he actually said to us, well, we will turn this to silage. We do have insurance to make sure that yeah, we no. continue. <laughs> <laughs> this is the facilitation that has been done by this government, particularly during these five years. Looking at the children, actually young people of Marapiani in the Bumalanga a province here in Canada, who said to us, today we can actually produce in a climate smart way that responds to climate change. We 
as these six young people, three girls and three boys, we can now employ people from our communities. Today in the Free State, we have experienced MEC Mkwena providing infrastructure support as well as implements to fast track the commercialization of our black farmers. Saying, while government has given you land, let me add by giving you implements that will support you. Land development support has reached some of you, maybe, maybe not all of you. But all of these are the steps responding to the recommendation of the panel on agriculture and land that said to us, if you want to make sure that black people can succeed in the agricultural economy, you need to give them support. SAFTA, the South African Development <coughs> uh, Farmers Association in the sugar industry, led by Dr. Mandala, not long ago last month, Minister of Trade and Industry was actually giving them a regulation that finally immense them in the sugar industry. They are no more small players, eh? They are very big. But what does that say? It say if government works together in a collaborative way in provinces, and nationally and municipalities, we can do more to change the lives of our people. It is through the work of the IMC that we've seen the Department of Environment and Forestry delivering forest lands to areas in the Eastern Cape and elsewhere, particularly in Bumalanga, enabling those communities now to become commercial forest producers. Yesterday, they were just pariahs in their own land. Today, they are the owners of assets. It was through the work of the IMC that we have seen the release of state land by some of our state-owned entities such as ESCOM and SAMRA to make sure that the land that they are not utilizing anymore can be put to use for actually changing the spatial planning of our country. About 14,000 hectares of land were given to the Human Settlement Department. Most of such land actually has informal settlements, which today are going to be formalized, and those communities can have full tenure on their land. It is through the work of the IMC that we have ensured that rural development gives an opportunity for rural communities to have economic activities where they are. Those who come from Limpompo know Kuna City, know Timane Mall. These has been through the facilitation of the work of the Department of Land Affairs to ensure that even in communal areas under the chiefs and traditional communities, development will come. It is through the work of the IMC that Deputy Minister Squatcha, together with Deputy Minister Babela and Deputy Minister Jeffries, led us to a point which culminated in the land summit where we look at the administration of communal land where the state will actually transfer those lands to the communities and their traditional leaders. Contrary to what Reverend Buteles, the Prime Minister of KwaZulu Natal is saying, that the state wants to usurp the powers of Amakosi as well as administer the land on their behalf. An assertion that is far from the truth. Ingonyama Trust Land is a juristic entity which manages the land of communities <coughs> under Ingonyama Trust, supported actually by the state, not the state usurping the powers and taking them away. 
But critical in these five years, the IMC decided that while it has been sound to lease the land to the various farmers in particular, it has inhibited them to grow further than they would like to. They gave us a mandate as this department to accelerate the conversion of those leaseholds to full time. As Deputy Minister has said, we crisscrossed the country consulting you as the farmers, particularly on plus land, that what you had wished for, uh, Deputy Minister, I will recall in 2019 and 2021 in particular, where some of the plus land farmers had some mini toy toy <laughs> yes. and yes. mobilized themselves, saying government yes. must give us these farms. That day has come. When we came in, we sang Gangan is excelling Because indeed, we have started the work. Most of you see that here have signed with Shilote. Mm -hmm. Your <laughs> land donations agreement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The majority of those are already in the deeds office. Others are just waiting for the municipalities' rates and taxes. So those who might have been doubting Thomas that this cannot happen today. Up to the law. <laughs> I must also say that one of the work that had been done by the AMC in these five years has been to make sure that we amend the Expropriation Act of 1975 to provide for expropriation in the public interest. <laughs> to ensure that you who were forcibly removed you can now be given land by the state as opposed to the 1975 act which only looked at expropriation for public purposes like the roads and servitude <laughs> this expropriation act is also creating a framework for expropriation for various arms of government. Today, the president had signed the Land Court Act, which will now create a formal court to adjudicate on all land matters in our country. A formal court that will now have full-time judges as opposed to the land claims court, which time and again had to request a secondment of judges from the other courts. Mm -hmm. But the importance of this court is that it will now help us to create a jurisprudence as this country on adjudicating on land matters of all sorts. So I is a land claim court. Is a mibango. You know, of all sorts, ne inheritance and legislature. You can tell me what's going on. These are the kind of the court, and that is part of the achievement of our IMC in this five years. So, as government, we have decided that we give a closeout report and an account to President and the nation that in the five years, this is what we have done to advance land reform in South Africa. As we are handing over the baton to those that will continue. Having put solid foundation, and one Dilesi Shobo, who wrote the two agriculture, yesterday was being interviewed about the implications of elections 
uh, to agriculture. And one of the things he said was that no policy change, but accelerating implementation. Mm -hmm. One of the things he said, the state must fast track the release of the three million hectares. I invited him today because I wanted <coughs> to say, one thing, we've already started. <laughs> so the transfer that is happening today to the 84, it's already eating on that 3 million hectares you were referring to. Asiubambi, siyabunikese. As I close, it's important to acknowledge that the IMC have indicated that there is work that has to be done to address and strengthen the administration of communal property association to ensure that where there are conflicts as a result of competing claims on the land its address, some of which Deputy Minister has indicated, like Capros and others, where we need to sort out the restitution <laughs> as well as those farmers who had been put there by us and some of you even by the then Homeland Government. We also have acknowledged that we need to build on the policy that has been agreed on the comprehensive producer support program. Because as Deputy Minister have indicated, we are not about to walk away. Transferring the land to you does not mean the state yeah. can continue to support. Because unless we support you further, you will regress. But also, the IMC has said, through the work that government has started during COVID on the presidential uh, program known as SPESI, which was really a stimulus at the time to support subsistence farmers, we need to make sure that that comprehensive producer support program start at the level of subsistence farmers and grow to the mega farmers. Musha, you will be happy. Asibala Shaba Bangan, which will be back. They are as much our responsibility as the commercial farmers. Because the role that subsistence farmers play in our community, which some of you may not appreciate, it, is to ensure that we do not have hunger in those local communities. And as we see the challenges of increasing food prices, it becomes even more important that backyard <coughs> and subsistence farmer is strengthened in our country to ensure that those farmers themselves can provide for their families, but the excess can be planted. As we close, I want to say working in partnership is an important step that we have started and that we must work in ensuring that we support. To the commodity organizations that are here, both from ACPIS and Ale Kamala Komusagi, Black Agricultural Commodities Federation. <laughs> Must continue to work with government in partnership in support of the various commodities. There will be times of tension, but that doesn't mean we need to walk away from each other. We need to find a way of making sure that we grow the sector together. The work we have started in building farmers organization as a voice must continue to grow. 
Because no minister, they get lost today, they are invited by a father tomorrow, now for tomorrow, how see your pattern? But working in partnership means we need to appreciate that it is much our task to build a non-racial non-sexist, prosperous yeah. South Africa. Yeah. The work we've started with the Agriculture Agro-Processing Master Plan must be the work that we commit and grow together on. I Zuba Kondalandoyokti, we will remain with one delay's book of two agriculture. That might be where we started, but we need to work towards closing the gap. So that there will be a time in South Africa where we just talk about South Africa's agriculture, not in racial terms, black and white. I want to acknowledge our pioneers, the young people in the agricultural sector, who actually have brought the innovation and the razzmatazz nature of working in the sector. <laughs> technology of planting on top of the shopping malls. But we are a morning side mall, and I say mainly, you will find young people planting there through hydroponics and pyramids and climate smart agriculture that shows that you can also farm in hills. Mm -hmm. But it is this innovation of young people who have actually claimed their space as the future of agriculture in South Africa. As I cast my eyes, I saw one of my sisters <coughs> who said when she finished matric and went to university, she wanted to do agriculture. And the parent says, no, sure. you are not going to do that because of what agriculture symbolized in the past. So she said, I had to find a way in which will threaten my parents so that they can finally say, agriculture. She said, um, I'm going to do criminology. <laughs> and thinking that the parents are going to say, what? Yes, I know criminology. No, 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 no. <laughs> she finished her criminology degree, but went back yeah. to agriculture. Mm -hmm. So she ended up and saying, Mama, no, that's not a criminology degree. Now I'm going to do what I like. <laughs> but interestingly, those young people have found a niche to make sure that agriculture gives us food security but becomes an economic activity around which we must all participate. So today, myself and this political leadership from provinces and national, we want to say congratulations to all of you for being patient. Even Manis Tetisa, you did that out of the good heart because you wanted us to be the best that we can do. Thank you very much.